and lots and lots of props. G'day, Stu here and welcome to AV Futures. Now I've built quite a few quads in my time and today I'm going to give you the top 10 tips and things you wish you knew before you started building your first quadcopter. Alrighty, number one! <laughs> All right, bigger is not always better. So when I first got into quadcopters, I was looking at some of these 2200 size batteries, 2.2 milliamp hours, and they're just too heavy for your 250 racer. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do, see if you can get a smaller battery. So between like a, a 1000 milliamp hour or a 1.4, uh, you can see the size difference just here between these two. These are a lot lighter and you're gonna have such a better time flying around this. There's no point flying around for 10 minutes if you're flying like a school bus. Number two. Get equipment that is 3S and 4S compatible. So when I first built my quad, this isn't it, but this has got the components of it. Uh, it was only rated to handle 3S. So that meant when I was ready to finally step up to a 4S battery, I had to build a whole nother one. So uh, this quad here, this one can run 3S or 4S batteries and it's fantastic. And I can just swap them, swap between them and I don't have to worry about anything. So definitely when you're picking your components, make sure it can handle 3S and 4S voltages. And we're probably specifically talking about the motors and the ESCs because that's where the main difference comes from. You might not be ready for 4S and you might want to stick to flying for 3S roll and that's fine. But it's always nice to have that option that when you do want to upgrade, all you have to do is buy another different 4S battery. You don't have to build a whole nother new quad. Number three! <laughs> God, I should probably stop doing that. Number three. Alrighty, so... Go with carbon fibre. It's so much stronger. I know there's a lot of other things that frames are made of out there, but carbon fibre is light and it's super strong. Don't get a glass fibre sort of mix. Just spend a little bit more cash and get carbon fibre. It's not going to break as often. Look, carbon fibre still does break in some of those nasty crashes, but it's what all the best frames are made, of, made out of and you're not going to regret spending that little bit extra to get a bit of carbon. Number four. Use some pigtails. So there's been so many pictures online that I've seen of people who have their VTX sticking out the back and their antenna attached to it. You're just asking to break it. Use a pigtail. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of money and a lot of time. The only thing that's going to break if it breaks is this top little part here where it connects to the frame. It's much cheaper to replace one of these than it is to replace a uh, VTX because some VTXs can get very expensive. So if you're building for the first time, definitely think about using a pigtail. I think they're like five bucks so and they're really light anyway. They don't really weigh too much. Use a pigtail. Alrighty, number five. Now this one's going to sound pretty obvious, but uh, when you're building for the first time, you don't think about it too much. You try, but you don't really know, and I was a victim of this. Number five, keep the weight down as much as possible. So this is my first build here, and I'm using the, the screws are too long. Every little bit of weight in this thing counts, and this thing was, well, it was a tank, but it was so heavy, and it made it so much slower, and I had reduced flight times, and just wasn't as nimble or agile. So keep the weight down as much as you can. It's covered in LEDs and things like that, so it was kind of cool, look cool, but uh, definitely if you're after a bit of performance and uh, more maneuverability, strip everything down as much as you can. Um, definitely lower the weight. So if you're thinking of adding some sort of module to the back, or I used to have a little piece up here that was some sort of steel and I could mount my LEDs to it, that was way too heavy. So go with the light option all the time. Try and reduce the weight as much as you can. Strip everything back. Now I even take the covers off my uh, take the covers off my ESCs, take them off my D4R2. I strip everything back and make it as light as I can, and try and shave those couple of grams off. Things like you don't need to mount it on that HD camera mount; just mount it straight to the frame. Th little things like that all add up to save a significant amount of weight, especially when this thing's trying to zoom around and fly through the air. Number six. <laughs> All right, this one, uh, this one's a little bit more technical and it's all about direct soldering. So unless you're planning to take your build apart anytime soon, and I can tell you from experience, I love to leave my builds up. Uh, you're gonna crash them a thousand times. You don't really need them to be that modular. Get rid of those bullet connectors and direct solder everything as much as you can. So a lot of ESCs, they come with their bullet connectors and people plug them in. Yeah, it's easy, but it's just another point of failure and it add, adds extra weight. So a bit of tip number five. Reduce all that, direct solder, direct solder your wires to your ESCs, and you can even take it another step further. These header pins here that I've got on my nays, and I'll show you a close up of them, you can even remove things like the header pins and directly solder the wires straight to the flight controller. So that's what I've done here on the ZMR. So direct solder as much as possible, as much as you're comfortable with as well. Because it can be a little daunting, practice a bit. 
Number seven, seven, seven. That was a pretty bad echo. Anyway, number seven. Get rid of this landing gear. So this one's especially for the racers. A lot of frames come with these little landing gear or little feet and things like that. Now, unless you're doing aerial photography work, fine, keep the feet, that's uh, sensible. But when you're building a quadcopter for racing, ditch the landing gear. You don't need it, it adds, oh, there you go, bounce a long way. It adds extra weight and it's just gonna snap off and get lost anyway. And it might rip uh, some of your ESC wires or something like that. So ditch the landing gear, you'll be much better off and you'll never miss it. All right, number eight. Get motors and ESCs that can handle the sort of battery and the prop that you want to run. So this ties into a little bit making it 3S and 4S compatible. I've got some tiny motors just here and these are best for like 3 and 4 inch props and then you've got to also make sure if I want to run some big 6 inch props that you've got motors that can run 6 inch props. So you really need to pick your motors wisely and make sure you're not overkilling something because this would be such a waste if I ran this on some 3 inch props, far too heavy. And uh, you're not definitely under underpowering something by putting motors that are too small. And it can be bad for the motors. Make sure you do your research and get uh, the right size motors for your quad. And you need to also think about what sort of prop you're going to be. Is it going to be bull nose? How steep is uh, the inclination on it going to be? So there's some different things to consider. I find there's sort of three good motors. A general tip. 1306s are best for uh, the three inch moving into four inch props. Then uh, you've got some 1806s which are best for your 4 inch and some sort of 5 inch, 4 inch bullnose props and some 5 inch ones. And then you're moving up into some like 2205s or the 2206 Cobras which I have and they're best for the 5 inch bullnose and the 6 inch props. Right. Number 9, no, 9, 9. <laughs> All right, this one is, uh, yeah, it's going to cost a little bit of extra money, but it's totally worth it, and that is order a spare motor and a spare ESC. So I've got stacks here, and I'll probably dump them out and show you a shot somewhere, but just please order one extra motor, one extra ESC. They are going to break and things, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, just spend that little bit of extra money and get one extra motor, one extra ESC. It's going to save you so much time and when you're sitting around waiting for your postage, you're going to wish that you ordered it and you think, gee, I wish I listened to tip number nine of Stu because uh, now I'm stuck here waiting, especially some parts are shipping from China. So please, just order one extra motor, one extra ESC. Alright, and number 10. Now this is, this is sort of a tip, but it's also a frame of mind that I want you to think about. We all love our quads, but what you need to know is it's going to crash, and it's going to crash hard, and things are going to break. So, definitely get attached to your quad, but when it breaks, just accept that it's part of the hobby. This, and everyone's going to agree here, I'm sure that our more experienced pilots could chime in. But when you crash and when you're flying and things aren't going so well, we all have those days. So you're going to feel down sometimes about your hobby. It's just part of it. Sometimes there's going to be things that's not going to work. You're going to feel frustrated. Everything seems to be going wrong. Why won't this thing take off? And you're going to get so, I'm not going to swear, but uh, very grumpy with your quad. And look, we all have those days. But on the other hand, it's worth it when everything comes together and you're right and you're up there and you're free and you're flying around. So. We all have those days, even the best pilots, when things aren't working, things are breaking, and it's just not going right. So accept that as part of the hobby. It's a fantastic hobby, and it brings so much joy to so many people, but yeah, you're going to have your down days too. So when things don't go right, just remember they will get better. Keep at it. Keep at it. Persist. All right, so that's my 10 tips I wish that I knew before I started building quadcopters anyway. I feel like I've learned a lot, but there's still a lot more to learn. Uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always happy flying and if any of you guys have some little tips out there too that you could leave for some other pilots that would be fantastic uh, there's a lot of people with a lot more knowledge than me on this stuff this is just my personal experience 10 tips I thought you should know but uh, if you could just drop those in the comments for anyone else who wants to check out this video uh, if you've got some great ideas or tips uh, please stick them below all right happy flying